Today marks the first day ever that I'm doing a laptop review and it is the Illigear Raven SER. It is the latest in Illigear's lineup of laptops and it's not to be confused with the original Raven or even the Raven SE. I know that's pretty confusing. So a little bit about Illigear first though. They're a brand here in Malaysia that specializes in custom gaming laptops and more recently, desktops where in the case of their laptops, they make them with the help of an ODM or a original device manufacturer like Clevo or Medion, if you know those guys. What makes their latest Raven SER interesting though is that for not a lot of money, you're getting quite a lot of computer. And yes, that even includes an NVIDIA RTX graphics card. This laptop also comes hot in the heels of the latest Xiaomi Mi Gaming laptop and they have just launched that. Yeah. So how well does the Raven SER perform? And is it worth your money? Let's find out. So let's talk about the origins or foundations of the beast first. As I mentioned before, Illigear doesn't actually make their own laptops from scratch, but actually contract the help from Tong Fang or Tong Fang, however you pronounce it, a Chinese ODM, and this particular model is very similar to the Tong Fang GK5CP0Z. At the heart of the Illigear Raven SER is an Intel Core i7-9750H, a high-performance 6-core 12-thread mobile processor with a base frequency of 2.6 and a boost of 4.5 GHz. This of course comes with an Intel HD graphics 630, but I can imagine that not many of you are interested in that. I mean, who actually is, right? We're more interested in the dedicated GPU and this laptop packs an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060 TU106 with 6GB of GDDR6 Micron RAM, which means that it is no slouch. My configuration came with a single stick of 16GB Micron DDR4 2666 memory with CL19 timings, 2T command rate, and a 512GB NVMe SSD that seems actually to be unbranded. I'm, I'm not actually sure who the manufacturer is, as Crystal Disk Info and SSDZ didn't return me anything, but I did run a speed test on it and I got a sequential read write of 3.3 gigabits per second and a write of 2.1 gigabits per second. We've got a nice screen to go with that as well, the BOE 084D, a 1920 by 1080 IPS panel, which of course is made by BOE and runs at 144Hz, and it has some pretty skinny bezels as well. It comes with a webcam and microphone above it, and well, it's not bad, but I do wonder why we are stuck with this kind of quality in 2019 considering mobile phones and the like have really surpassed this kind of quality. So the camera isn't bad per se, but I've obviously, I don't know, it kind of questions like mobile phone cameras are so good right now, right? Why can't someone stick a mobile phone grade camera into a laptop? It doesn't make sense, right? The display and webcam doesn't exactly smoothly blend into the laptop the way more premium laptops do, but I do appreciate that it is quite slim and unobtrusive. The display is pretty average in terms of brightness and dimness, and I did find it a bit difficult to use it even on a slightly overcast day. Unfortunately, there is no ambient light sensor as well to adjust this based on your usage environment. I don't have any special equipment to test any of the color accuracy numbers, so all I can do is compare them with my other supposedly color accurate displays, and from what I can see, it's a pretty accurate display, and pretty as well. This may be because Illigear does mention on their website that it has a 100% coverage of the sRGB color space, and does provide free color calibration as well. So since I didn't have any other information on this panel, I looked it up online and I found that the Lenovo Legion Y550 actually carries the same panel as this laptop. And Notebook Check found that it has a grey to grey response time of 8.8 .8 milliseconds which makes it perfectly fine for gaming. There is however no Nvidia G-Sync or FreeSync though so that's a bit of a bummer. Moving down towards the keyboard, surprisingly even in quite a small package, the laptop manages to pack in a full sized keyboard. Yes, including a numpad. Now I know that many gamers don't actually use the numpad, but for people like me who intend to use it not just for gaming but for productivity, it is definitely something that I can appreciate. 
The keyboard isn't mechanical, which isn't surprising given the price, but it's not actually too bad for silicon domes. Even compared to my previous ASUS ZenBook, this laptop's keyboard is definitely a lot sturdier and nicer to type on with no discernible flex as well when pressing down the middle of the keyboard. If of course I had to comment and, you know, maybe give some critique over it though, it would be that the actuation force needed to press these switches down are just a little bit too much for my liking, but of course that may be because I've been spoiled by the mechanical keyboards on my desktop. Of course you may have already noticed this by now, but just like any other self-respecting gaming laptop, it comes with an RGB backlit keyboard. Love it or hate it, you now have it. I'm fine with RGB keyboards, but the one thing that I didn't like about this one however was when I was closing the lid of the laptop. It doesn't seem to turn the RGB lights off at all and it keeps running. And of course this doesn't make sense of course, right? Why would not earth would you need it to be running all the time when you can't even see the keyboard? It's a nitpick for sure, but it irritates me just a little. This next bit is also just a little bit of a nitpick, but there aren't any indicator lights on the laptop to denote whether the num lock is on or off. Strangely though, there is one for the caps lock which is right beside the battery indicator, but none for the num lock. Also, the lights are just a little bit dim, making it really difficult to tell if they're on or off in a really bright environment. Moving down even further than the keyboard, you'll find the trackpad or touchpad, however you call it. It uses the Windows Position drivers which means it's pretty nice to use and I didn't find any noticeable looseness on the touchpad as a whole. The left and right clicks have a really nice tactile click and sound to it. What if you're gaming or just using a mouse instead though? Well, you can just double tap the top left corner to lock the touchpad and that prevents it from any accidental touches. An LED will light up as well to let you know that it's locked. So let's examine the laptop physically. Looking at the laptop on the left, you get a full-sized Ethernet jack that uses the Realtek Gigabit Ethernet controller which is nice to see of course, given that most modern laptops these days don't even come with one. You'll also find a USB 2.0 port and a headphone and microphone jack. Let's take a look on the right. You get two USB 3.0 ports. Oh wait 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 no, I think it was called USB 3.1 Gen 1 now. No wait, I think they renamed it again as well, I think it's called USB 3.2 Gen 1 now. But in all seriousness though, the USB consortium really does need to get their naming schemes together. Aside from those, you also get a card reader that runs at USB 2.0. I know, I know, it's not USB 3.0, but anyway, it's still a great addition for someone like me who loads videos in and out of my DSLR. Checking out the back, you have a power port to charge the laptop, a USB-C port which unfortunately isn't Thunderbolt nor is it USB-PD so you can't use it to charge the laptop, a HDMI output and two mini display ports. Oh and also there are two exhaust vents here to eject all of that hot laptop air. Finally, let's check out the bottom of the laptop. You get two 2 watt bottom firing speakers and plenty of intake vents for the cooling. Those speakers are unfortunately though not all that great. Yes, they do get quite loud, but I do find that they sound extremely muffled and lacking in clarity. I tried playing a game like Insurgency Sandstorm on it which has some pretty nice sound design and everything just sounded like an underwater muddy mess. Even listening to music, honestly, was pretty unpleasant. Talking about the laptop in terms of size, taking it off the Ilegir website, the laptop is 259.8mm in width, 244.3mm in depth, and 20mm in height. Compared to my older ZenBooks UX305 UA, this makes this laptop only about 3 to 4 centimeters wider and longer, as well as being about 4 millimeters thicker. That's pretty impressive given that a ZenBook is meant to be an ultrabook with an ultra low voltage processor, whereas this is a gaming laptop. Also on their website, Illigear states that this laptop weighs in at about 1.9 kilograms, but weighing it myself, I found it to be about 1.98 kilograms, which is about you know, more 2 kilograms than 1.9. It's not that big of a deal, but I thought that I'd like to point it out. 
The power brick that comes with this laptop is made by FSP and outputs at 19.5 volts at 9.23 amps and weighs in at about 620 grams. This means that together with the laptop, they weigh in perfectly at 2.6 kilograms. I really like how overall the laptop's design doesn't exactly scream gamery as well, except for maybe the keyboard, and I can appreciate that. There's no need for sharp angled gamery elements over the flashy designs. So well done, Illigir. Now it's not much of a laptop review without taking a closer look inside, so I'm going to do just that and to do so, I'm going to undo 11 screws down the bottom and then pry the hinges open with a plastic pry tool. We can instantly see the fans that exhaust to the rear, the three heat pipes that are connected to the heat sinks as well as the CPU and the GPU. The more expensive models have vents to the side of the laptops as well, as well as two more heat pipes, but we'll find out later if this three pipe solution is sufficient or not. I got a free upgrade that swapped out the standard Thermo Paste to Thermo Grizzlies Cryonaut, and that should help to keep the laptop cool as well. We also see two dim slots for the memory and I have one that is currently being used, so I have the option to stick in another 16 gig dim for a total of 32 gigabytes of memory. If of course as well 512 gigabytes of internal storage isn't enough for you, then you can always expand it further as well as there is not only another M.2 slot, but also one for a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive, or SSD if you will. We also see the networking card that I have, which is the Intel 9560. That's pretty much it for the tour of the outside, so let's check out the software. Now when I first received the laptop, it came with a trial version of Windows, but I wanted to install my Windows 10 Pro on it, so I did a clean format of the laptop. I took note of any pre-installed applications on the laptop however, and as I saw, the only thing that was installed was the Illigir Command Center. Anyway, after I formatted, I ran into a bit of problems actually. I constantly got blue screens of death caused by nvldmkm.sys, and I mean constant. And when I wasn't, the GPU wasn't working as properly as I expected to as I constantly got code 43 errors in device manager, and in games, the FPS would be way below what I expected to be, even on low. After countless hours trying to figure it out, I contacted Elegir and they pointed me to the drivers that they used and I noticed something different about it. So you see, the drivers that was pointed to me by Nvidia by their website by default was the DCH drivers instead of the standard drivers and just by switching over to standard, suddenly the laptop works perfectly. So yeah, I'm just going to point this out for anyone who is maybe having any of these errors on their laptops or even any other laptop actually, to try out these standard drivers if they're getting any blue screens or errors. After all, I spent a lot of many hours googling this with no results, so maybe someone might find this helpful. Anyway, with those issues out of the way, let's go into the only software that is installed on this laptop, the Illigir Command Center. It's pretty clunky as far as software goes, but I guess it gets the job done. I just wish they would redesign it a little, though, to be a bit more user-friendly. You get the option to enable or disable the keyboard lighting to turn off and on the display to change its color calibration and to do more gaming focused things like disabling the Windows key, setting it such that the discrete GPU is constantly used and turning off the on-screen display. When it comes to customizing the RGB lighting on the keyboard, there are a few modes. Color which is like static, breeding which pulses on and off, wave which is usually my favorite but on this laptop has a pretty terrible transition speed making it look weird and stuttery, rainbow which is currently the default choice for me, mix which cycles between all the colors, and finally flash which is basically a seizure inducing mode. On some modes you get to define the direction of the effects as well as the speed and that's pretty much it so it's pretty basic as far as customization goes. Over on the power tab this is where things get less ideal in terms of that UI design that I mentioned earlier. The laptop makes it difficult to see what can be clicked and what can't as everything just looks greyed out. Office mode is essentially a manual fan control mode with a paper fan denoting silence, a stand fan denoting a middle ground and a air conditioner for high speed. Game mode on the other hand is more like an auto mode that automatically ramps up the fans depending on the system temperatures. Finally there is turbo mode which I am actually honestly unsure what the difference of compared to 
game mode. If you would like to however run the fans at maximum speed though, you can click on the fan boost button and it will do just that. It also gets substantially louder if you do so, yeah, have a listen. The good thing is that normally it doesn't sound like this even when gaming but I'll get to that in just a bit. Oh and by the way there is a physical button that you can press right beside the power button and it cycles between the office mode, game mode and turbo mode. I didn't find it particularly useful but I mean it's there if you want it. Finally we have monitoring software which again isn't the easiest to understand and navigate through but at least it has some interesting information like CPU usage and temperatures, GPU usage and temperatures, memory usage and hard drive temperatures. You also get network speeds, battery life and a remaining charge as well as GPU frequency and SSD information. Speaking of temperatures, when writing up this review on this laptop while on battery, the temperatures over ambient for the CPU and GPU sat at about 26 Celsius for the CPU and 22 Celsius for the GPU. The laptop and wrist rest area sat at about 2 Celsius over ambient and the keyboard was a good 3 Celsius over ambient. I could definitely feel the heat during this time where my wrists and palms definitely got a bit sweaty, so it was just a little bit uncomfortable but not all that annoying. When plugged in though, these temperatures rose in another 2 to 6 Celsius, making the hotter wrist rests and keyboard more noticeable. On my gaming load of Insurgency Sandstorm, I saw the temperatures of the GPU spike all the way up to 49 Celsius over ambient with the core running at 1890 MHz and the memory at 7000 MHz. The CPU though went all the way up to a toasty 68 Celsius over ambient and a max turbo of 4.1 GHz. Given that my ambient temperature is about 32 Celsius at the time of filming this, that made the CPU a toasty 100 degrees Celsius. During that time as well, the wrist rest rose to 4 Celsius over ambient and the keyboard 15 Celsius over ambient. The good thing is though, temperatures aside, when gaming under high settings, I saw the FPS hover at about 60 to 70 FPS, which is great actually for a notoriously under-optimized game like Insurgency Sandstorm. The laptop did get a bit louder as well, but not really by all that much. I also got this laptop to run and demo some VR games and with the Oculus Rift needing 3 USB ports and a HDMI port, this laptop has exactly just that, as if it was made for VR. The RTX 2060 inside however isn't the best when it comes to keeping a consistently high FPS even in Beat Saber, but I guess for a short session and demo it works just fine. Finally, we get into battery life and with most gaming laptops having a pretty subpar battery life, the Raven SER isn't much different. I got about 3 hours of usage time just writing up this review while listening to music at maximum volume which is about the same length quoted to me by an Illigear rep. I mean, okay yeah, it's, it's still a gaming laptop after all, not an ultra portable with an ultra low voltage processor so correct expectations must be set. Which brings us then to the end of this review. I don't think that I've really talked about the price yet, but the conclusion should be the best time if any to talk about it. At the time at which I bought this laptop, it cost me about 5,000 ringgit, which is about 1,200 US dollars. Similarly spec laptops from companies like Dell, Asus, MSI, and Gigabyte blow way above this mark actually, with some of them even costing up to, you know, two times the cost. Even among low cost options like Xiaomi which has just launched a gaming laptop with the exact same specs, that laptop costs more than this laptop, though I'm unsure about the build quality differences. The only closest competitor that I know of is from another local Malaysian brand which is Level 51 by Aftershock of Singapore. The Forge 15 at its similar specs is similarly priced actually, with the only difference probably being the ODMs. Level 51 uses Clevo while Illigear uses Tongfang and I heard that Tongfang is better than Clevo, though I can't really back this claim up. 
With that said, you'd be hard pressed to find another laptop anywhere else that delivers this kind of specs at this kind of price. The Illigo Raven SER just comes in at such a crazy price performance value that it makes it really hard to turn down actually. And not only is it so well specced, it's really solidly built as well, you know, for a plastic laptop. There are trade-offs of course as you're giving away things like a metal unibody, a mechanical keyboard and things like G-Sync and of course FreeSync, but if they're all things that you can live without, and I can, then I can wholeheartedly recommend the Illigear Raven SER, because you'd be really hard pressed to find better value anywhere else. So this video ended up way longer than I expected it to, but as usual, I try to be as thorough as I can with my videos. I'd like to give a shout out to Ryan from Illigear as well, as he helped me out with my purchase and the after sale service of this laptop. If you're looking to get a Raven SER for yourself, be sure to look him up and he'll get you sorted. Anyway, as usual, if you liked the video, give it a like, share it around as it helps me greatly. Let me know what you think in the comments section below and get in touch with me through Twitter or Facebook. Hit the bell icon to stay notified for when any videos go live and remember to subscribe. This is Yang the Tech Rodent and I will see you guys around. Slide out. Woo.